Did you guys know that there is a frame of thought out there? Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Did you guys know there's a frame of thought out there that says when doing eschatology or when reading Bible prophecy, you can't take most of it literally. They said when you read it, like the book of Re Revelations, for example, they said much of it is symbolic. And a lot of it is allegory, and a lot of it is um, idiom. And so you have to look at it from a spiritual point of view. You can't take these prophecies literally. And they base an entire dialogue off of this and also do a complete uh, doctrine based on this. Um, actually taking these scriptures and completely blowing them out of proportion um, and changing them. I've now discovered this is the reason or the main reason behind why so many people think that it is going to be a 14-year tribulation and not a seven-year tribulation. Like the Bible says, the Bible gives a very clear day count of what the seven-year tribulation is. So, what I wanted to do is I wanted to go over some prophecies that were actually literally fulfilled just to kind of put all this in perspective. Just to let you know it's in the hundreds. <clears throat> Israel would suffer enslavement in Egypt, but be freed and established in their homeland, the Promised Land. That's in Genesis 15, 13, 16. <clears throat> Stick with me because further in the list, it really gets good. The kingdom of Israel would be split into the separate kingdoms of Israel and Judah as a result of Solomon's sins. 1 Kings 11, 29-37. The people of Israel would be defeated and exiled in national captivity because of their sins. It's in Deuteronomy 28.25, Deuteronomy 28.36-37, and Deuteronomy 28.47-52. Nineveh, capital city of the Assyrian Empire, would be captured and destroyed. Nahum 3, 1-19. The ancient Egyptians would lose their national superpower status and never again rule over other nations. Ezekiel 29, 15, and that's still true to this day. The nation of Judah would be defeated and exiled to Babylon for its sins. Jeremiah 25, 11 through 13. The Jews exiled to Babylon would be allowed to return to Jerusalem after 70 years. Jeremiah 25, 11 through 12. And keep in mind, these are all literal fulfillments of these prophecies. A lot of people say you, you got to take a lot of these prophecies with a grain of salt. Uh, you can't take all of them literally. Well, I'm going to show you how specific it gets. The ruler would allow, uh, who would allow the Jewish exiles to return and rebuild Jerusalem and the temple would be named Cyrus, known to history as Cyrus the Great. Isaiah 44, 28, Isaiah 45, 1 through 6, and Isaiah 45, 13. The Babylonian Empire would fall to the Medes, or the Medes. Daniel 5, 25 through 31. The Babylonian Empire would be followed by a Medo-Persian Empire, the Greek Empire of Alexander the Great, and the Roman Empire. Daniel 2, uh, 31, 40, Daniel 7, 15, 17, Daniel 7, 19, and Daniel 8, 20 through 22. Jerusalem and its temple would be destroyed not long after Jesus Christ's earthly ministry was completed. He specifically mentioned this one. Matthew 23, 37 through 39, and Matthew 24, 1 through 2. Most of the original apostles would be persecuted and martyred. Matthew 23, 34, John 15, 20, and Luke eleven forty nine. 49. God's church would faithfully carry on its commission of proclaiming the gospel to the nations and teaching those who God calls all that he has commanded. Matthew 24, 14, and Matthew 28, 19 through 20, and that is literally still going on today. Wait, is that it? <laughs> Give me just a second here. Let me get back where I was.
Okay, well, that article mess, messed up. So you see, those were, that was just hitting on a few. That didn't even hit on a bunch of them. But when you go back and you read those references I gave, every single one of those were literally fulfilled. There's no misunderstanding it. There's no nothing. They literally, it literally happened. Come on now. I'm trying to find a list of them. Sinuses are messed up. So a lot of people, they go on and on about, you can't take it literally, but it's proved literally. All right, what are you doing now? Come on. Give me just a second. Okay, okay sorry about that. I had to get back to my place. So now we're going to look at some that were um, talked about with Jesus. And we're just going to hit on them real quick, but you'll see everything was literally fulfilled. There was nothing figuratively done about this. There are at least 333 prophecies of the first coming of Christ that were literally fulfilled. Look at some of the fulfilled prophecies in the first coming. In Isaiah 7.14, born of a virgin. In Micah 5.2, born at Bethlehem. Jeremiah 31.15, slaughter of the children. That's where the Herod was trying to get him. Hosea 11.1, 1, called out of Egypt. That was when they went there to hide. Zechariah 9.9, entry into Jerusalem. Israel 11.2, anointed with the Spirit. Israel, Isaiah 11.2, anointed with the Spirit. Psalm 69.21, gall and vinegar. That's what they gave him on the cross. Exodus 12.46 and Psalms 34.20, not a bone broken. Isaiah 53, death, burial, and resurrection. Christ becomes sin for us, forgiveness through his death. Daniel 9, 24, 27, date of first coming. Isaiah 9, 6, God taking on human flesh. Psalms 41, 9, 55, 12 through 14, betrayed by a friend. Zechariah 13, 7, disciples forsake him. Zechariah 11, 12, sold for 30 pieces of silver. Zechariah 11, 13, potter's field. Isaiah 56, spit on and scourged. Psalms 22, 16, hands and feet pierced. Psalms 22, 18, garments parted. And they cast lots for his garments. Um, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. Oh, these are ones that so still need to be fulfilled. Yeah, it talks about all the things that are going to happen when he comes back. So you see, we just, I just went over a few and look at, and every one of them was literally fulfilled. There was no, there was no um, assumption to it or reading to it or, oh, come on, man. This is not working out. There was no um, spirituality to it. It literally happened. Uh, there's no, well, this one was this way and this one was this way. Did I just read? So when we talk about the end times and we talk about prophecies that are going to be fulfilled and a lot of people, you know, they, they look at it and go, well, you know, you can't really take that seriously. I get that a lot of times when I bring up these different things, but what they don't realize is, is that's how this stuff happens. And it's everyone. There's not a single prophecy that was spiritually fulfilled. They were all literally fulfilled. So if all those are literally fulfilled, why wouldn't the rest of them be literally fulfilled? And this is what I try to get across to people. It, God is consistent. He's consistent in everything he does. And everything he did applies to everything that he's about to do. So if everything in the past was fulfilled literally, why wouldn't everything in the future be fulfilled literally? And... What it is, it's a change of doctrine. It's people trying to adjust it to justify what they're doing, their sins, uh, trying to elevate themselves, trying to make money, something like that. 
because all these people that, that change the doctrine and change the word, they know there's people out there that will give them money. These people are, are, are weak and minded and they're foolish. They don't understand what's going on and they love to have their ears tickled and they will pay thousands of dollars to somebody to tickle their ears. And they'll just sing their praises, not realizing what's going on. So, trying to find some more here to share with you guys. And I can't find any more lists. Okay, well that didn't work out as good as I wanted it to, but I was able to give you a quick video. So, <coughs> quickly we just covered a couple of them. A bunch about the Israeli people and their development and all the things that happened to them in the Old Testament. And then a bunch about Jesus Christ and the fulfillment of his uh, his uh, coming and his ministry. If those were all fulfilled literally, why wouldn't everything else be fulfilled literally? And you know, you can go online and look and they have PDFs that show all the different prophecies. There's articles about it. There's all kinds of writings on it. Of all the ones that have been fulfilled. And we can literally look back and see, yep, these were fulfilled. And so far... Not a single one has been on a spiritual level. It hasn't been any other way other than a literal physical fulfillment of these prophecies. What does that tell us? Well, since God is consistent, he's going to stay on that track and keep doing that. He's not going to change it. But yet I hear a lot of people say, well, you, you can't read too much into the book of Revelations because, you know, a lot of that is just figurative. You know, it's not going to be a literal fulfillment. Well, why would God change his track record? He's not going to do it. So when you hear somebody say that, you need to tell them, well, what about all these scriptures that were fulfilled in the past that were literal, and now it's you, you say it's not going to be literal? They're incorrect. They're incorrect in their assumption, and they're incorrect in their interpretation. Um, if they're telling you, you can't take that it says seven years literally, where when the, the scriptures say it's seven years, literally seven years, it's, I told one guy, Look, the, the, the tribulation is seven years. The Bible very clearly says it. No, the Bible very clearly says it's 14. I said, show me the scripture that says it's 14. He never showed me any scripture. So I commented back after about an hour and I said, okay, let me help you. In Daniel and in Revelations, it gives an extremely specific day count of first part, 1290 days and associated events with that part. Then there's an event that happens in the middle. Then 1260 days and events associated with that. And then 1,335 days, which is 45 days after the end of the tribulation, that is uh, the, going into the millennial kingdom. And all along this are specific events that indicate these time frames. I said, once we see events that happen at the start of the tribulation, we can literally count the days to the day of how these things are going to happen and when they're going to happen. I said, now, why would that make anybody think it was a 14-year time frame? When you count those days up, it equals seven years. He says, well, there's gaps in between some of those times. I was like, okay. In the book of Daniel, it says it is one week. And all the prophecy that goes along with all the weeks, uh, the angel told him the week is given unto you for one year. Or a day is given unto you for one year. So a week, seven days, is seven years. It's extremely specific. Where do you get the other week, the other seven years? Because it's not in there. Then the prophecy of Daniel goes all the way down to the 69th week and then immediately changes. We've now had the church age for the last almost 2,000 years where everything came to a pause and now Bible prophecy is starting back up again. Where does the seventh, the, the second set of seven years come from? I can't find it and nobody else can show it to me either. I did have one woman that I saw and she talked about that and I asked her about that and it was all crazy. And I, was not, I just said, okay, well, that, the way you explained it makes more sense. But it doesn't because it doesn't match Scripture. And it's, it's a, to me, it's a way of confusing people and getting them to follow you. It's for followers, views, likes, all that kind of stuff. It's just to get attention. But it's a clear misunderstanding of what the Scripture says because in three, four places that I know of, it says very specifically it is – one week, which in the book of Daniel, they give the, the time frame. It's seven years. And it gives the day count. So how can that be interpreted as anything other than seven? Because it's seven years. Now, you can tell yourself it's, it's 
is different than that. But nobody showed me the scripture that shows it. They don't give me the breakdown and show the timeline. I asked that one guy, I said, is there any way you can put out, like send me a PDF to a spreadsheet on how you've got this broken down? Because what you said in your video doesn't make any sense. And I want to understand where you're coming from. And so she just gave me an abridged explanation of it and a link to her book. Go figure. She said it was free, but anyway, you know how that goes. So clearly, and that's just one example, clearly people are trying to change it on purpose or they're doing it not realizing that they're doing it. If, if God did this from the beginning and fulfilled all these scriptures and all, all these prophecies and every one of them literally, and we've now found the locations. A lot of people said the crossing of the Red Sea was, was a figurative speech. Okay, what part of he parted the waters and they walked through, did you not understand? Where's the figurative in that? So, I, And I would ask people, so you're telling me they didn't actually cross the Red Sea, even though the Bible says they did cross the Red Sea? And they're like, well, no, it's this. you got to understand it. They couldn't explain it. Well, they've actually found the crossing. They found the markers on both ends where the crossing was, and they found the chariots, the bones, the horse hooves, and all that down in the bottom in that spot. And in the Red Sea, that's the only spot at that depth. It's 800 feet on the one side of it, and it's like 1,800 feet on the other. So that was a literal fulfillment. Sodom and Gomorrah, literal fulfillment. Uh, Mount Sinai, they found it now. They, they, like all the markings are there. They've carved stuff in there and built all this stuff. They found it. They found the split rock with all the water damage, and there's not a drop of water in that desert. They found the, the Midian. They found the wells, the 12 springs. Everything. They found everything. They literally found the path that they followed and all the evidence along that path where they, the Israelites were at when they were in the wilderness for 40 years. So was that figurative or was that literal? It was literal because they found the evidence it was literal. Um, the temple, literal. Tearing down of the temple, literal. The, uh, well, they're, you're about to see the literal fulfillment of the Ark of the Covenant. Trying to think of some of the other prophecies. My mind is just going all crazy because there's so many prophecies that have been fulfilled and these people go out of their way to deny this. So you guys can do a search on there and you can see that the, all the different uh, listings and different articles talking about all the fulfillment of that. So if, And people are starting to bring this debate back up again of you can't take the book of Revelations literally. Okay, then why did God say it literally? Well, there's a lot of, you know, descriptive speech, a lot of this, a lot of that. Okay, well... When I read it, it talks about literal events, and I can see what these events are going to be. Asteroids being cast in the ocean, mountain burning with fire. Um, just the description of the beast and what it looked like. It literally describes a coalition of countries. It's not hard to figure it out. So, when I hear somebody say, well, Jesus isn't really coming back, it's just a, it's like a spiritual fulfillment of it. Okay, then why does it say the Mount of Olives will split in two and the Jewish people are going to run through there to hide while he does battle? Well, it's not literally going to happen. I was like, okay. Said, so when we say it happened, I'm going to come find you and I'm going to ask you about it. Because it's going to literally happen. So just a bunch of silliness. These people go out of their way. They try to do this stuff because they want to confuse people. It's a satanic or Luciferian desire in their heart, whether they know it or not, to lead people away from the truth. Guys, all these scriptures and all these prophecies will be literally fulfilled literally so don't let somebody lead you away from that stuff don't let somebody confuse you um if you don't understand some of those prophecies that's okay give it time and keep studying because it'll come to you and he'll show it to you if you're truly with 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 him he'll show it to you love you guys i bless you all in jesus name i've been kind of messed up today but i've managed to get some videos out for you um it's probably gonna be the last one tonight because i gotta take off and uh, go take care of some business. Busy, busy, busy all the time. Stay strong in the Lord. Stay in prayer. Keep looking up. It's almost time. We're right at the home stretch. We're at the last the end of the track at the finish line. He's trying everything he can to get as many of us as he can before we go. Because he knows we're going. He can't wait for us to leave. But he's going to get us and hit us hard all the way up to the end. So stay on guard. Put on that armor of God. And keep it on at all times. Stay in prayer at all times. Watch yourselves. It's getting dangerous. We have to be careful. The spiritual warfare is high. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I will see you in the next video or I will see you in the clouds.